Last time, we talked about entropy. Today, let's see it in action with two thermodynamics problems. We'll examine a reversible process involving water and then an irreversible process. Pause and read the problem on screen, then let's solve it step by step. Here's what's given. Water starts as a saturated liquid at 150 degrees Celsius. The process is internally reversible at constant pressure and temperature. The question asks us to find the work done and the heat transfer per unit mass. In the PV and TS diagrams, you can see we're moving from saturated liquid to saturated vapor. The equation for work at constant pressure is W over M equals P times the change in specific volume. Using table A2, we pull the pressure, the specific volume of saturated liquid, and of saturated vapor. Plugging in, we get about 186 kilojoules per kilogram of work. For heat transfer, we use Q over M equals T times the change in entropy. Again, table A2 gives us entropy values for liquid and vapor. Substituting, we get around 2,114 kilojoules per kilogram. Since the process is reversible, entropy production is zero. Now, let's try the irreversible case. Pause and read this problem and see if you can solve it yourself before we go through it. Here, the piston cylinder has the same initial state, but instead of heating, we stir the water with a paddle wheel. There's no heat transfer, but work is added, and because the process is irreversible, entropy is produced. Using the energy balance, W over M equals the negative of the change in internal energy. From table A2, we use the internal energy of saturated liquid and saturated vapor at 150 degrees Celsius. That gives about negative 1,928 kilojoules per kilogram. The negative means the paddle work input is greater than the expansion work. For entropy production, we calculate the difference between the entropy values of saturated vapor and saturated liquid. That comes out to about 4.95 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Unlike the reversible case, entropy increases because of irreversibilities like fluid friction. So what did we see? In the reversible process, heat transfer drives the phase change with no entropy production. In the irreversible process, stirring adds work, entropy rises, and energy balances differently, even though the initial and final states are the same. Next time, we'll look at how heat moves in real life, like boiling water versus heating a piece of metal in a pan. That's conduction versus convection, and it's everywhere around us.